Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. So today we're going to do another video where we're going to talk a little bit more about web design because a lot of you have been requesting those videos, so I definitely want to help you out with that. Today's video is going to be some more advice on getting started as a web designer. Now I already did a video on how to become a web designer in 2015, but I want to give you guys some very specific context here in terms of some things you should be looking at if you're new to the web design field. Maybe you already know HTML, maybe you already have your tools down, but maybe you need some specific strategy about how to go about presenting yourself as a web designer, how to market yourself effectively, and what a productive workflow might look like, and what you should be doing when you're talking to clients. So I'm gonna try and walk through a little bit of that in a brief video today. So, one of the things I would say about being a beginning web designer is you really need to get some solid portfolio work under your belt. And I don't think that clients are the answer to that. I think that what you need to do is you need to look at the type of clients that you're trying to pursue. Are you trying to pursue clients who have a small local business? Are you trying to pursue clients who might be getting started as creatives themselves? Maybe you're trying to target your local photographers. Maybe you're trying to uh, target freelance writers or marketers who are starting a new small business. You need to really look at who your target market is and you need to build a series of websites that represent that. And I would consider even building some website templates that you can use to show that you can, one, you can do this as an example. And then two, I would say that in the event that you're dealing with clients that have a very minimal budget, if you have these templates made, you can go ahead and say, look, I normally charge for a super custom web design this price, which might be a price that starts at $1,000. You could then say, but, if you only need a five page website just to get started and you don't mind something that's not super custom, I already have something pre-built exactly for people like you and we're gonna change out some of the images and we're gonna put your logo or your name in there, but this is a $250 website and it's not gonna take me as long. I just need to copy and paste all of your content into here and you'll have something to get started with. And then you can sell them bolt-on packages like, look, I can do a little bit of SEO work for you or if you really wanna tweak it and customize it, we can start here and then you can pay me a little bit at a time and we can go further and really make it something different you could go ahead and start the conversation there. This helps your client get online. This gives you something to present in terms of your work and it lets you productize. So then you can you know, save some of your time. You should also be doing templates that you can resell in marketplaces like ThemeForest and Envato and places like that. And again, they're not sponsoring the channel or anything, but I just want to throw that out there as a resource for you so that when you're not getting clients, when you're having a dry month, Maybe you're selling a WordPress theme or an HTML theme or an email marketing theme. Maybe you're selling these things or some standard web banners or graphics. These things can be selling for you at five, 10 and $50 a piece in an online marketplace. And that can be generating passive income for you so that when you're not actively working, you still have an income stream coming in that's getting you through the dry months and you're not reliant on clients and taking clients you really shouldn't out of desperation, whether they're clients that are more difficult, a project you don't fully understand, or a client that's budget is really below where you really want to be charging. So I would say look at that. With web design, the volume of work in your portfolio makes a real difference as to what you can charge and whether people take you seriously. So I would say on your own, before you even get these clients that maybe you need to have 10 or 20 websites that you've designed, even if they're just template websites, on your own so you have enough to showcase to say that you're credible and that you can do this and that they're not taking a chance on you and that you're not a total newbie. Now something that I wanna warn some of you web designers about is that because you know that your clients are not necessarily tech savvy and don't look at the code, sometimes you like to get really cute with leaving comments in the code that they can't see or naming things in an interesting way. But clients are getting smarter and smarter every day. And sometimes you don't know if they have a tech savvy friend who might be looking at this and vetting you. So I would say don't try and be cute and clever and sneak little Easter eggs into the code or into your comments. It's unprofessional and it could come back to haunt you, especially in the age of social media. So I would say try and avoid that and just keep things professional and keep your comments clean and make sure that they're valuable to the context of editing the work. Some final thoughts. The tools that you use as a web designer don't matter. I know a lot of senior web designers and I know a lot of people that are web developers and coders like to hate on things like Dreamweaver and Adobe Muse. And that's their preference. But here's the thing. I don't like strawberries. Do I tell everybody and their sister and brother to not eat strawberries? No. 
I don't like strawberries. I gorged on them as a kid. I don't like the taste of them anymore. I'm done with strawberries, right? But that doesn't mean that they're not great for somebody else and that they're not nutritious and tasty and healthy for that person and the absolute right choice for them just because they're not the right thing for me. So I would say, don't let someone tell you that a tool is a bad tool. You need to have your own experience of it. Uh, some people like Stanley hammers. Some people like Craftsman. I get Craftsman because people I know get Craftsman. I use Nikon because people I know have Nikon cameras and I can ask them things about them or I can borrow and trade out the lenses and the batteries. So, you know, but do I think that Canon makes bad cameras? No, I think Canon makes amazing cameras. I think Sony makes amazing cameras. I'm probably gonna buy a Sony camera. So I would say, Use the tool that you're comfortable with and that gets it done for you and ignore what other people have to say about the tool being bad, but listen to them in terms of how effective it is. At the end of the day, you're creating something. Your results will speak for themselves, not the tools that you use. Look, a lot of people go Mac, 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 Mac. I use Mac and I use Windows. I can produce the same results, the exact same results, whether my experience of it is different in Windows than it is in Mac, and Windows 10 it's been a lot better than it used to be. I can produce the exact same things, regardless of whether I'm on PC or Mac, provided that I'm using similar specs and my Wacom tablet, I can do exactly the same thing. So don't get hung up on the tools and what other people are using unless you want to be able to ask them advice or for help on how to do something, then you guys should be using similar tools. So those are my thoughts on getting started as a web designer. If you still have questions, leave those in the comment section below and I'll try and answer as many of them as I can. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Consider joining the Create Awesome newsletter. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching and don't forget, create something awesome today.